So you've been thinking about creating a Sims 4 safe heart or maybe you haven't thought at all and today's video just inspired you. Well today I'm going to give you all of the information you need to know in terms of how to create one. Obviously everybody is on different levels so I will put time stamps in the video so please feel free to skip to the sections that are most relevant to you. The default Sims 4 worlds are very very boring. Every single time you start a new game you come into Willow Creek every time and you're met by the same screen and that's one of the main reasons why the game I think just feels so stale. Also, The Sims 4 has been out for almost 10 years now. The base game has changed so much, yet the base game worlds don't really reflect that anymore. A save file is like a foundation, so every single time you want to start a new game, instead of clicking new game, you load into this new save file that you've created, and that acts as your new game. So there are different types of save files and it's important to know what kind of save file you want to make because you have to have a direction because if you don't have one, obviously you're going to get overwhelmed. Examples include making a story save, giving every single townie in your world their own kind of storyline, giving them relationships between each other, giving them jobs, skills, etc. Making the townies themselves feel more alive. Next up, you could do a rotational save. This is where you play as one household at a time with a plan in mind in terms of what you're going to do with them and once you've achieved that thing you move on to the next household and then the next household and you build your world up that way. Another type is simply a towny makeover save. Maybe you want to make over Eliza Pancakes, Johnny Zest, Bob Pancakes, the goth family. Maybe you just want to give them all a judge up. This could be simply changing their appearance but it could also be changing up their houses too. Then of course we have a build save. This is where you add brand new lots in to the world, you remove existing lots and change them with new ones without really caring about townies. Next up we have a mod and custom content save. If there are certain mods that you want to play with and you know you love these mods and you play with them all the time, create a save file that's designed to have these mods in mind. Maybe you have active career mods which require certain community lot types that are modded in. Maybe you have certain CC that you want to apply to all townies in the entire game. Next up we have a cross pack save. This is my personal favorite way to create a save file. This is where you update all of the worlds you own with things from other packs that you own. So if you own The Sims 4 Dine Out, you might want to build a restaurant in Oasis Springs or Billow Creek. If you own cats and dogs, you might want to build a vets in one of the worlds. If you own Spa Day, but you also own Island Living, you could create a tropical kind of beachside spa lot. There are loads of different options that you can go down with this and this is my personal favorite because if you do own a certain amount of packs a lot of the special community lot types are not existing in other worlds and I also think it's nice to just update base game builds with build stuff from packs that you own or change their appearance with outfits from packs that you own. Another type of save is a vanilla overhaul. This is where you just very slightly change things. This could also be referred to as like a fix save, fixing the problems with the standard save of the Sims 4. For example, did you know that Johnny Zest right here, he is the son of the Landgrab family, but he's not actually in their family tree. So maybe you just want to do a vanilla overhaul updating that. Maybe you want to give them a swimming pool because no lots were updated with swimming pools ever since the swimming pool update, which is bizarre. Maybe you would like to give the pancake household a child because there are no children or toddlers in this game either because toddlers didn't exist in The Sims 4 on release. This is what I refer to as a vanilla overhaul or maybe just like slightly changing some of the base game lots to make them more fun. There are so many different things you can do. Or of course, you might just want to do a combination of everything. So when you're getting started, the first thing that you need to do is click save as not save and then simply name it my save file version one or something like this. Now with this, if you click on this copy icon here, this allows you to see what your save file is in your desktop. Now, according to this, mine is save file slot underscore 000005. So this save 0005, I can copy this and then I can save it to a memory stick or 
I can save it somewhere else as a backup. So this is how you keep your save file safe. So if you want to start a new game, you can just copy it back into here. But the first main thing that you have to do is go into your game options and make sure your settings are what you want them to be, particularly gameplay settings. So I normally turn off neighborhood stories when I create a save file. I make sure the lifespan is long. I turn off auto aging. And if you own any packs, you might want to change pack settings. I'm not on my home computer right now, so I only have the base game, so I can't show you. You may also want to change lunar cycle length. There's lots of different things you can do. Now, when you're getting started with customizing your save, you might want to think, oh, I want to do one world at a time, one neighborhood at a time. I'm going to start off with Foundry Cove at the bottom here, and I'm going to do every single lot here first. I personally recommend not doing that because it gets a bit boring and a bit samey. I recommend honestly just hopping around. Maybe one day you want to tackle this lot here and build a family and a house for them. Then the next day you might want to go into Oasis Springs and do a larger lot. And you maybe want to make a community lot. Keep flipping between different things each time and it keeps it a lot more fun. With a save file there's a chicken in the egg situation. You can either build a house first and then put townies to go in the house or you can make the townies first and then build the house around them. I personally like to build a very basic house with minimal furnishings first. Move a family in and then customize the house based on who that family is and their personality. So a little bit of both. But ideally it's better to go in with some kind of vision in mind. In between putting in households and houses themselves, I think it's really important to consider community lots too. One thing that annoys me personally about the base game is every single world has a museum, every world has a nightclub, every world has a gym, every world has a library. I feel like you don't need these in every single world, especially if you own a lot of packs it's just a waste of lot space. For Willow Creek especially okay I like to see Newcrest as an extension to Willow Creek so I often dump a lot of community lots in Newcrest and I also like to remove these ones here literally just replace them with normal houses. When you're creating community lots for each world it's important to think about what community lots serve the people in that specific world so Willow Creek I would say is more like a family town so in my personal and almost say file. I have a lot of kids and teens and toddlers in there. As a lot trait, you might want to make it teen neighborhood. So you can make some kind of teen hangout spot. Or if you're building a gym in Willow Creek, if you're planning on making most households families with kids, you might want to put a kid's play area in the gym. So parents can take their kids along to the gym with them and keep them distracted. Like there's so many possible things you can think about with community lots. It's my personal favorite thing to build because I feel like it makes the world feel a lot more alive. After you've created a couple of households and houses for them to live in, you might want to start going into the actual gameplay and giving them some stories. For example, the pancake household feels quite lonely here. If I added a family to live in this house and this house and this house, I might want to go into gameplay and maybe just have like a one neighborhood party, like a moving in party where you invite all the close neighbors and then you can build up your relationships with them or even bring them down down. Make sure every single household has a job, has a life, has some basic skills and then that just helps to bring in some realism. And if you're lazy you can always use some cheats and mods in order to actually achieve this because not everybody wants to do it the old-fashioned way and that's fine. Now something that's really important when you're getting started on a world save is the towny bin. So you know when you go into a community lot like Willow Creek Park and you've got these food stalls and some random towny will work on the food stall. These townies are often pulled from the bin which is in managed households here. So what I would like you to do is simply create a household with a max, the whole maximum eight sims and make loads of random different sims. Or like me, if you're very lazy, you simply type in NPC townies. Download any of these that you would like to. You can see this one here comes with a maid for the world. It comes with a mail carrier, a nanny. So now that I've got these, I am literally just going to place some in this random lot here and then what I'm going to do is go into more options in the bottom right and evict the household straight away and now they're evicted you can see they're in the managed households bin so every single time the game wants to spawn these townies it will take them from this bin instead of putting in townies from other worlds you can also just download some other like completely random NPC townies these ones don't have jobs these are just random people that you can fill your world with as I said you can make them yourself or you
you can do it the lazy way and download them off the gallery like I do. It's completely your choice. But it is an important step that a lot of people miss. I want to share some tips with you in order to make the process a lot more fun. The first one is using the gallery. Stop being afraid of downloading other people's bills. You guys get so angry with me. Satchel Sims is stealing off the gallery. Yes, I am stealing off the gallery. That is the whole point of the gallery. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to use the gallery properly. So firstly, when it comes to building, I'm going to go over to Potter's Splay here. Now, if you're looking for a house that somebody else has built on the Potter's Splay lot, sort by lots and literally change the hashtag to Potter's Splay. That's a very weird name. Sort by popular now or most popular to avoid the junk. And here you can see we've got some builds and I might just want to pop this one down here because it looks very nice. That literally took me 10 seconds. I mean, if you're just using the gallery guys, you could build an entire save file within less than an hour. And that's why I think it's really important to not be afraid to use a gallery. Then I might move a household in here. Once a household is moved in, I might customize the house based on their needs a little bit, but mostly keep it very similar. And that way it's a lot less overwhelming. Using a hashtag followed by the name of the lot is a really great way to just plop lots down. Guys, don't try to complete everything yourself. It's just way too much work. You're going to find it overwhelming. Bringing other people's builds and townies into your game is a great way to go about it. And I do have a couple of videos of my favorite gallery creators. So I'm going to pop that in the description of this video. My next tip is to create challenges and restrictions in order to make it more fun. If I said, let's go into the bargain bin lot here and I just want you to build anything that you like. It doesn't matter what it is. I just want you to build anything. You're going to be like, well, what the hell do I do? On the other hand, if I search for shell challenge and I just download like a completely random shell off the gallery here, you have something to work with and you can do a little shell challenge and it makes it a little bit more interesting. Another great way is to work within a fixed budget. In order to work with a budget, you've got to move a household into the house first. Testing cheat space on and then you type in money followed by how many household funds you want them to have. So I might give this sim a 14,000 budget and then we go into build mode and now we have to try and build a house using only 14k. This is another great way to make it more challenging. Giving yourselves little challenges along the way I just feel like makes it a lot more fun and engaging. Another tip I have for you is make sure you accommodate for every single life stage. The Sims 4 is built around young adults. There are barely any other life stages in the game. Build Built some community lots with all of the life stages in mind and this will help to make your world feel a lot more alive. So these are not main tips that I think you have to follow, but these are just some optional tips that some people may follow just to give you a little bit of inspiration. As a challenge, you can do almost like an Animal Crossing style save where in Animal Crossing, you move in like one villager at a time. In The Sims 4, you could simply move in one Sim, maybe in Newcrest at a time, build up their entire house from scratch, give them a job, give them a life. And then once they're very much settled in what you want it to achieve, you move on to the next household and you build up their house and then you give them a job and give them a relationship with the other household and then you move on to the next one. It's kind of like quality over quantity. It makes it a lot more challenging and it's a lot slower, but I think it's great if you're the kind of person who only likes to play with just one household at a time. My next tip is to create a scenario save. Now with scenarios, in order to integrate them into your save file, you've got to make sure that your save file is here the last save that you played with under resume and then you click play scenario choose any household that you would like to choose click play and they will automatically appear into your save file lot now you could move them into any lot that you like feel free to use Control shift c free real estate on so you can make them afford any lot or you could put them in a blank lot and build up the house from scratch you can only play with one scenario at a time so playing with scenarios is a really great way to build up your world in ways that you didn't think about before. Another optional tip I have for you is make sure you integrate pack features in every single world. What I mean by that is 
if you own the get together pack that pack comes with clubs if you do have that pack you might want to create a willow creek book club you can also create members hangouts i don't have actually get together installed on this computer but you can set a certain lock as a club hangout and lock the door so only people of that club can go inside now i've just downloaded a totally random play group of the gallery now you can set this as a club lock hangout and you can have it so only toddler sims and their parents are in this club and only they can enter the doors and then it's like you have your own kind of daycare lot there are loads of different options with get together clubs another one is if you own the seasons pack to use a calendar to create custom holidays for all of your sims to celebrate there are loads of different options depending on the packs you own and i definitely recommend exploring all of the gameplay features to make sure your world feels a lot more alive because you've paid for those packs so you better be using them my next piece of advice is to make a graveyard you will be killing sims in your let's play let's be honest download one off the gallery like this or create your own make sure it's got these two tile grid spaces here so every time a sim dies you can put them in the little graveyard i feel like every single save file needs a graveyard i mean we have them in the sims 3 base game but we don't have them in the sims 4 and i just feel like it's important also depending on what packs you own you might be able to give it a lot challenge like haunted or something like this which will make it even more fun and my next optional tip is to create a commune what i mean by that is you want to give every single sim in a certain neighborhood or world a specific set of abilities that are unique to them for example okay in this parched prospect area i might make a household for this vista quarry lot here maybe there's a husband and a wife maybe the wife is an author so she specializes in the writing skill and she's self-employed as a writer but then maybe he works part-time as a handyman and you can raise his mechanical skill very high so so if you're playing as a roomies household and loads of stuff break in their house you can switch over to play as the husband in Vista Quarry have him visit over and fix it for them or if one of the roomies die you can make the wife of Vista Quarry write the book of life and then she can raise them from the dead if you give every single household or every single sim in each household their own speciality they can all kind of work together so that you don't have to create a super sim if you want to achieve everything this is something i personally like to do in my save file because i think it makes it a lot more interesting i also like to make sure that every single world has at least one house that's big enough to throw a house party so you can have neighborhood parties in the game there are loads of different options you can do with this now obviously not everyone can play with mods or wants to play with mods but i want to share with you some mods i think are so important for a save file the first one is called sim spawn overhaul by lothari ho this one does some amazing things so this mod will prevent townies from visiting different worlds so if you're living in willow creek you won't find a random townie from the snowy escape world or the island living world just randomly walking around willow creek if you go Go to the vampire world you won't find mortimer goth just randomly walking around this mod prevents it there are also many other different kind of options here like you can enable stray animals everywhere instead of just brindleton bay there are loads of different options with this sim spawn overhaul and i just think it's really important for a save file because it helps to make your world feel a lot more immersive the next mod is mc command center this is your ultimate cheat mod so if you just want to quickly cheat a sim to have a certain career you want to cheat them to to dress a certain way or cheat their relationships cheat them to be pregnant you can this just speeds up the whole process of giving your townies lore and stories another one is the ui cheats extension mod this basically does a very similar thing to mc command center but it's a lot more intuitive to use with this mod installed you can basically right click on anything to customize it so if i right click my sims job i can immediately just promote them to level five of their job i can right click how household funds and just completely change how much household funds that they have you can right click a relationship and immediately just change the relationship with the sim it's a very very useful mod the next one is optional and this is map replacement so if you go into the patreon of 20th century plum bob click on collections these are free by the way click on map replacements sort by tier and public and this person has basically completely changed every single sims for map so you can see glimmer 
a brick from Ram with Magic, that's before and that's after. And they've done this for every world, including different variations. So this is Willow Creek, for example. I just, obviously it doesn't change how the world itself look, it only changes the map screen, but I just feel like it makes it a lot more interesting. And the map screen, by the way, in this mod also reflects how the world actually looks. So you can see in Oasis Springs, the grassy areas are shown in this map replacement, whereas in the original map, it doesn't show that. It shows it all as sand, which is incorrect. So this one is a must for me for making save files, just to make it a lot easier. Important point here, make sure you back up your save file just before any update because updates might break the game, you never know. So I always like to copy a backup of my save file and save it externally, for example, in a Google Drive or a cloud document or something just to keep it safe. There might be some smaller things and smaller snagging issues along the way with save files, but these are kinds of things that you learn as you go along. The only thing I will just say is just have fun with it. It could be something cozy that you do just whilst watching something on Netflix in the evening. Don't try to rush it, you can just build it up and play in it as you go along, that's completely fine. If you guys would like to see my personal save file then let me know and I'll show you at some point. Also if you have any questions, ask them in the comments but also if you have any other ideas of things you can do in a save file, feel free to share them down in the comments below and also read the comments if you're looking for some more inspiration. And as I said before, I will put in the description some videos I've already uploaded which I think will be useful to your save file so make sure you check those out. Otherwise thank you very much for watching, I will see you in the next one.